So now that we understand the basics of how data fetching works, let's learn how we can dynamically generate paths. We already know that we can create a dynamic route in the app directory by creating a folder with the name in square brackets. So I'm going to do that now. Slug. The name slug in this case will be our parameter and it will be how we segment our routes. So now whatever data we need for the route, say details for a blog post, we can fetch within the body of the functional component. However, how do we define routes that we want to be statically generated at build time? If we don't want everything to be running basically server side rendered on the fly. This is where the function generate static params comes into play. So I just created a simple little detail page that will render with anything that we put after blog. So if I go slash blog and then say slash one, two, three, four, you're going to see this content render. So yeah, our blog layout and then blog detail page like we have defined here. Perfect. In our Firebase project, in our Firestore database, I just created a collection called blog with two sample articles that have some content, a slug, so what our URL extension will be, and a title. We're going to pull this to make statically generated routes. Okay, so I got all the objects we're going to need to pull data from our Firestore database. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this new function. So export asynchronous generate static params. And I should add a oops, function. And what we're going to do is I'm going to do const blog posts. So I'm just going to get all of them from get docs. And in there I'll create a collection of database. And the collection is called blog. I should go back here and await this. Then I'm just going to return blog post.docs.map. map each of these into an object with a value of slug that will have the slug value from our database. So we got data and then it is slug. Perfect. Okay. So now I'm also we need to we need to import that object into our detail page. So this has to be called Params. If you're bringing in anything from your generate static params, the object itself has to be called params. So params, and this is going to have slug, and then I just have to do the type signature for this. So we'll have params, and then slug is a string. Okay, perfect. So now when I go in here and I add slug, if you notice, I added just first post to the end of this URL string. When I save this, beautiful. So now we will show our slug. So first hyphen post, that is one of our slugs we defined within our Firestore database for our two blog posts here. However, if we try going to a different route that is not one of them, just something random like that, you'll see that the page still renders. This is usually going to be what you want if you're using incremental static regeneration or just as a static site. However, let's go over how we could stop this behavior from happening and make sure that our generate static params is the only thing that is allowed to create routes for us. So we can do this by exporting a variable called dynamic params. So I'm going to do export const dynamic params. And by default, this is true. So if we leave this, this will behave exactly the same. However, if we make this false and we refresh this, you will see now that we get a 404 page. 
this most likely is some behavior that you're not gonna be using just because this means that say you had your blog and it incrementally static regenerates itself your generate static params will only run at build time so that would then mean that if you add something to say your headless CMS for a blog post it's not going to update and it will never be a valid route unless you rebuild the entire application if you have this set to true however though if generate static params doesn't have a root already built for it it will try to build one on the fly so now I want to show you how you could actually use this for your blog for example if you are updating it with a headless CMS so I went down here and I added essentially the same query into the body of our actual functional component however I'm looking for where the slug value in the Firestore database is equal to the slug value that we have right here so basically getting whatever this parameter is in the URL. From there, I'm going to check, once we get it, if there are any documents on this query that fit that. So that's the same as saying, do we have anything in our Firestore database that has a slug equal to this value? And if not, we're going to call this not found function. If, however, if we don't do that, we now have our selected post, and from there, I'm just throwing our content, what is this, into a p-tag. So you can see that all right here. So I just changed our dynamic params value to true, and let's see what then happens. If we go to a root that is not generated by our generate static params function. Perfect, so now you're gonna see a 404 page. That's exactly what we want. As you can see though, we can't really just export a metadata function with data that comes from the Firestore. So here's what we're going to have to do. We have to create a function called generate metadata. And this is another built-in function that is available in Next.js 13. I'm just going to copy and paste it in. So this is essentially looking pretty similar to what we're doing down here in our detail page. In our generate metadata, we still get all the same information we still get the same parameters however now what we're going to do is we're just going to take it and we're just going to make our title tag be equal to the title of our firestore document so now what you will see is when we go back to a root that actually exists you'll see that our whoops our title does actually successfully change that's how you're going to control your metadata within your dynamic roots Throughout this tutorial so far, you might have noticed we haven't used a single hook yet within any of our components. Let's see what happens if we just want to say set up a simple use state variable. I'm going to do const, let's call it count, and then set count equals use state, and we'll just call it zero. I'm just going to import that. The top, perfect. Let's see what happens when we save that big error and now you're gonna see you're importing a component that needs use state it only works in a client component but none of its parents are marked with the use client so they're server components by default what does this mean well in Next.js 13 there are now react server components built in would allow for us to render things just a little bit faster and make the ease on the client side a lot lighter we're going to talk about these in the next one and how to leverage server and client components properly so that you can get the performance and the web vitals that you want within your application. However, this is all for now. We'll talk about that more in the next one. And yeah, if you like this comment, please like and subscribe. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one.